Hello, and welcome to Archvelder's Hacks with Archvelder and his amazing hacks. So, I came across this location in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms before the invasion of the Black Empire, at the north of the Vale, next to the Golden Stair. And it contains what I consider to be a truly amazing gold farm. Now, this video is titled deliberately controversially, the best gold farm in the game. Now, despite that statement, there are a few limitations that apply here. First, this is a legacy farm, so not all the materials will sell right away, and not everyone will be willing to use the exploit necessary to make this work. Additionally, it's worth clarifying that gold farming is different from gold making, and there's a gold production method on my Patreon currently, which beats the crap out of every gold farm out there by some distance. That said, the sheer diversity of materials you get from this farm makes it very attractive. You'll need to watch this video right to the end to understand why it's so good. Now, as you can see here, there's a number of stone lines that run from the stair into the veil proper. Again, these just look like random mobs. However, if you put down an ox statue as a brewmaster monk, things begin to look a little more promising. You can use a class trial brewmaster if you don't already have one. Wait until all the lions that spawn are attacking the statue, then kill them. This will cause their spawn rate to standardise. Every 15 seconds they'll all respawn and you can kill them repeatedly and efficiently. Now at first you'll probably get uninteresting trash items dropping a lot, but as you keep doing this farm things get more and more intriguing. First, you get lots of greens, which you can vendor for a reasonable amount of gold. Second, you get stone hearts, which are technically a trash item, but the raw gold value of these adds up quite fast. Third, you get motes of harmony. Nine of these make a spirit of harmony. Spirits of harmony are the primary crafting material for all professions in Pandaria. Fourth, you get Sky Shards. Now, these can be very valuable, as we'll see in a minute, as they can be used to obtain a Bind on Equip mount, which you can sell for a lot of gold. Fifth, you get this item, Ancient Gaole Cash Key, which is arguably the most valuable item on the drop table, and also will be explained shortly. Essentially, you use it to open chests, which themselves contain gold and valuable items. Sixth, as we'll see, the stone lines themselves can be mined for huge amounts of ghost iron ore and trillium. Now, you'll need to be able to vendor all the greens and trash items quickly, so I recommend using a Traveler's Tundra Mammoth you can purchase in Dalaran, and an add-on such as Auto Seller or Auto Vendor, combined with something like Crap Away, and that will sell all your junk items and greens instantly. You'll also want to send the Ghost Iron Log Boxes that drop occasionally to a Class Trial Rogue, who should be able to lockpick them. Now I'm going to tell you exactly what to do with the Sky Shards. The Sky Shards that drop here are incredibly valuable, as 10 of them can be used to obtain a mount. It takes me about 3 hours to get 10 of them. Once you have 10, you can turn them into a single item, as I'm demonstrating here. It's quite a dramatic effect. You can then use this item to instantly kill the Sky Dragon Alani, which flies randomly about the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. Unlike in previous expansions, you no longer need to fight with or loot Alani. The mount appears instantly in your bags, as soon as you use the Sky Crystal. Now it's worth pointing out that the mount sells for around 30,000 gold, average price across all realms, so farming sky shards alone is worth 10,000 gold an hour. I'd keep one for yourself though, it's a cool mount. Bear in mind if you're doing this on a class trial, your trial may expire before you get all the shards, but they are bind on account, so you can send them to an alt. Now, arguably the best, and certainly the most enjoyable part of this farm, is the keys. The ancient Gaole cash key can be used in Gaole halls. I have no idea how you're supposed to pronounce that. I'll just show you how to enter them here. I'm going to speed up the footage.
You'll want to avoid the white tiles uh, at this point. They have a nasty knockback which slows you down. It doesn't take too long to get down here, only a couple of minutes. But you want to minimise downtime as much as possible. So make sure you've got a decent number of keys, at least 50, maybe over 100. Now these beautiful golden chests can be unlocked and they contain an abundance of mists of Pandaria materials, sky shards, wind wool cloth, spirit dust, exotic leather, herbs, cooking mats, magnificent hide, golden lotus and spirits of harmony, plus about 30 raw gold in each chest. This provides you with a very diverse collection of items to sell on the auction house. Something you get here is always in demand. There aren't any farms in Warcraft that I know of where you can get such a wide range of materials from a single source. You can also get Ghost Iron Ore and Black and White Trillium. But there is an even faster way to get these mining materials, as I'll show you now. The icing on the cake here is the fact that the stone lions themselves can be mined. If you don't have a monk with the mining profession, remember you can use a class trial. Mining skill makes no difference, as long as you have level 1 Pandaren mining. You will however need something to speed up your mining. You can either buy some Dark Moon Firewater off the auction house, or get it from the Dark Moon Fair, or alternatively, if you're doing this on one of your main characters, then farm the Burning Berserkers on the Timeless Isle for an item called Forager's Gloves. It takes about 40 minutes to get that item on average. The Berserkers are located in the northeast of Timeless Isle in the Blazing Way area. Because of the number of lions that you can farm here, you can get 800 ghost iron ore per hour from this source. That's almost as much as an expert miner can get in an hour just from farming ghost iron. You'll also get around 100 black and white trillium. This would be a viable farm just for the ore alone. To mine the lions efficiently, I would get the add-on faster loot, which removes the annoying pop-up loot box and greatly speeds up your mining. Finally, the lesser charms of good fortune that the lions drop can be turned into the Quartermaster here at Nizal Temple in Taolong Steps in exchange for Elder Charms. Now, the Elder Charms give you an extra item from early tier Mr. Pandaria raids. That will be worth anywhere between 10 to 50 gold. If you've seen my video on farming old LFR raids, you will know how fast that adds up. It's a tidy extra sum. Putting a gold per hour figure on this farm isn't easy. If you took the average sale price of all the items you can farm at an hour here, it would be something like over 100,000 gold an hour, which is obviously totally unrealistic because you won't be able to sell a lot of these items in a short time frame. That said, I noticed with the sheer volume of items this farm provides, something is usually selling. So you will be getting 20 to 30k returns on your time in the short term, which will increase over time as you sell the mounts and you get large amounts of your mats bought out. Now, is this the best way to make gold of the game? Uh, no, as I said at the start, there are some insane gold making glitches at the moment, one of which my patrons have been heavily exploiting very recently. God knows how long it will last, but it's been working very well up till now. In addition, production strategies and trading strategies that are highly optimized generally beat even the best gold farms. Someone always asks with this type of video, will I get banned for doing this? Now the exploit aspect of this is solely related to the use of a class trial. There have been lots of class trial exploits over the years and to my knowledge, no one has ever been banned for using one, though the opportunities do get nerfed. So, there's the video. If you liked it, why not subscribe? Thanks for watching, this has been Archvelder.